I learned Vim in 7 days and in this video I would like to talk about what I did every day to get comfortable with Vim in 7 days. If you don't know what Vim is, Vim is a text editor which makes text editing very efficient. You may have seen Vim in hacking scenes of different movies. Apart from the hacking scenes, the coolest thing about Vim is that most of the time your computers come pre-installed with Vim. So you can use it right away by opening your terminal and typing Vim and file name. The main reason that I wanted to learn Vim was to improve my productivity and use it on a daily basis. However, while learning Vim, I realized that Vim makes you to think different compared to the normal text editors. Here is how. Let's say you want to delete three words from the code. How would you do it? Probably you would select word by using mouse or some keyboard shortcut and then click backspace. But when you use Vim, you will just type E3W, which means delete three words. So basically when using Vim, you need to think about the end result. Let's say I want to have a cup of coffee with milk. Imagine I'm saying you that, can you take cup? And then I pause and then I say, can you fill it with coffee? And then I pause and finally I say, can you put some milk on it? This is how normal text editors or IDEs make us look dumb. Basically, I could have just said, bring me a cup of coffee with milk. So when using Vim, you need to think about the end result always to get the most out of the editor. Without a further ado, let's go to the each day and what I learned in seven days. On the first day, I learned how to open, save and close file. Basically, to open a file in Vim, you need to just type Vim and then space and file name. And that will bring you to the screen like this. But as you can see, when you're clicking keyboard, most of the time you can't type anything. This is where Vim modes comes in. Vim has three important modes. Normal mode, visual mode and insert mode. When you open a file in Vim, you land in normal mode. In order to type something, you need to press I key and then you can type text into the file. After typing something, you can press escape key and move around file or execute some commands. If you typed something by mistake, you can press U key for undo in normal mode or Ctrl R for redo. When it comes to navigations on the first day, I focused on simple navigations. Basically to move around file in Vim, you can use HJKL. Other than that, you can navigate word by word forward using W key in Vim. And if you want to navigate backwards word by word, you can use B key. W and B are called motions in Vim and you can combine them with commands. For example, what they will do is that if you would press D and W, then it would delete a word or if you press D, D and then it would delete a whole line. To scroll in a file that you opened with Vim, you can use Ctrl U to scroll up and Ctrl D to scroll down. Note that if you want to navigate character by character or line by line and arrow keys don't work in Vim, you can use HJKL which can help you to navigate and replace those arrow keys. And if arrow keys are enabled by default, I would highly recommend you to disable them because that will help you to travel less in the keyboard when navigating in the same file line by line or character by character. As I use Android Studio and Visual Studio Code on a daily basis. Also, in the first day of learning, I installed Vim plugins for both Android Studio and Visual Studio Code so that I don't have to only practice it in terminal, but also I can practice it in my daily IDEs. First day was so amazing that I was super excited to see what I can learn on the second day. My main focus was to learn how I can edit text more effectively and be more productive. That's why I focused on append and insert commands. Basically when you use uppercase A, it will go to the end of line and switch to the insert mode where you can type new text. And if you use capital I in normal mode, it will go to the beginning of line and switch to the insert mode. Furthermore, I also learned how to navigate to the beginning beginning and end of the line. One of the problems of these two days was I could write something but I couldn't see line numbers in terminal. So that's why I researched about it and I found out that I should modify a file called vimrc and put this line to enable the line numbers. Now that we have line numbers, how to navigate to a specific line. So for this, you can click escape if you're in insert or visual mode and click colon and write the line number that you want to go to. Or 
you can simply type the line number and press capital G and it will take you to the line. Another small issue was not having syntax highlighting in Vim and for that also I could edit Vim RC file and that was it. On the third day I decided to ditch out my mouse because it was slowing down my learning process. Basically to get most out of Vim you shouldn't use mouse and you should focus on using keyboard because every time your hand travels somewhere it is a minus to your productivity. That's why I also installed Vim extension to Chrome because I could practice basically the things that I learned while I'm using normal browser and not only when writing or editing code. The next thing I wanted to learn was how to search in a file in Vim. To search something you need to go to normal mode by pressing escape key and then slash and type the word that you are looking for. However the problem is that by default search is case sensitive. But to disable case sensitivity you can add this line to your vimrc file. And this wraps up the third day of my learning process. One of the most important skills of a programmer is copying and pasting. That's why on fourth day I wanted to focus how I can copy and paste text in Vim. So basically to copy text in Vim you need to use Y command which stands for yank. Basically when you are in insert mode you can use Ctrl V or Command V to paste some text that you have in already in your clipboard. However, if you want to do it not in insert mode and in more proper way, then you can press key which will paste text as in the clipboard. However, there's one caveat to it. Basically in Vim there's different types of clipboards and if you want to match it to your system clipboard, you need to add this line to your vimrc file. And once you're done with that, uh, you can use Y, which stands for yank, to copy something. For example, if you want to copy a word, you can use uh, YW, which means yank word. Or if you want to copy a whole line, you can use YY, which is yanking the whole line. However, keep in mind that as you can use Ctrl V or Command V in uh, insert mode to paste text, you can also use your mouse to copy text. To be honest, on fifth day I wanted to relax more and focus on practicing. Therefore I learned how to replace character or word by using R. Basically when you use lowercase r you can replace a single character and if you wanna replace characters as you are typing you can use capital R which will be in replace mode until you click escape. Also I learned that to search a text and replace it with something you can use this command. Basically when you are in normal mode and you click colon you can execute various commands and this is one of them. Also on the fifth day I learned that you can use tilde to change the case of a letter. For example if you are using camel case and there's some lower case or upper case you can always press tilde key in your keyboard and it will change the case of the character. Moreover I learned that when you click z twice it will center the line that you are in. And also if you want to have that line in the top or bottom of the screen you you can use ZB or ZT. Alright, now we are in sixth day and it's about learning refactoring. As you may know, we often modify our code refactor things, so it's good to learn how we can do it properly in Vim. In this day, basically I learned how you can change a word or change a line. Basically to change a word you can use CIW which means that change inner word basically it deletes the word and then switches to insert. 
and by using C command you can achieve different things which will be helpful in your refactoring. But how are these combinations are formed? Vim has few commands that you can combine with different motions and get the most out of it. You can combine these commands with motions or objects. Sixth day was basically a really informative day because I deep dived into how those commands are formed and it was more helpful day I would say in my learning process. On the last day of my 7-day Vim learning challenge, I focused on more practicing the things I learned and also I tried to learn some configurations that can be useful. While practicing, I also checked few videos and tutorials to understand Vim and the things I learned more deeper and more better. Also for practicing, I could definitely recommend you to use Vim Tutor, which is pre-installed command that you can type and it will bring you to some text file where you will see some explanations and then you can use different commands and things that are shown uh, in the tutorial. However, I have to mention that practicing did not stop on the seventh day. It was basically more like a last day of learning challenge. To this day, I use Vim every day and I really enjoy it and highly recommend you to learn it as it will drastically change your workflow and make you more productive and uh, make your code editing process especially very easy and more intuitive. In the beginning, Vim was really frustrating text editor for me, but it didn't stop me from learning and uh, once you learn the basics it's really easy to form full comments that can help you to achieve a task since it's more uh, natural than normal text editors or IDEs. All right I will put the links down in the description so that you can go and read them and also I will put link to my own vimrc file in case it's useful for you. 